Lindsay's starting up a narrow pillar. There was that foot switch because she didn't have room to put feet side by side. And she's flagging her right foot around the pillar. So it's probably going to be back and forth on that. Yep. So yep. switched feet and then flagging the left. She may even do it one more time. We'll see how much room there is here. Yep. Another. F That's really good narrow pillar technique. You see how much her hips are in. It's got a bit of a bulge to pull over at the top. So hips in, back arched. So she can reach up and get the good placement. Now she's got more room for her feet. So that left foot was just flagged out onto a blob. And the right is now doing the same thing. And she reaches up with her left. It's hard to tell, but it's definitely steep right here. So she's probably going to try and move through this little section relatively quickly. Get up onto the, get her feet up above where her tools are. Get a little rest before she starts the next steep bit. There was a step through, then heel first. Now she's going to get up into that zone where she can get a little rest, assess the next chunk of ice, which is exactly what she's doing now. All the weights on her feet, and this would be a good opportunity to look for some good protection. If you were leading, get those hands back. Doesn't look like this pillar's seen a whole lot of traffic on the season. So, yeah, so there's no, you know, big pick holes. She's looking around, really assessing the ice. She's still getting some good hooks. That's one of the things, the interesting things about the ice park is it sees so much traffic that can actually teach kind of bad technique. And so um, when you're learning to move on harder, steep ice, seek out those places that haven't been climbed as much and you'll get that real backcountry ice feel even in a place like the ice park. Yeah, she's, you see her test that placement there. And now, yeah, this that's a like rock high step with that left foot because it got her on a flat foot and she's able to rock her hips over onto it. So we're we've moved away from the classic tripod position. And that was another great example for testing the tool. And she kind of pulled up on a look to see what was happening when she tested it. And she's got both tools level, but she's hanging off them to move her feet and then get that right tool up. You see the key here, even though her feet aren't uh, level, is that when she stands up, her hips are in. Right there, hips in. Now she's got a good hook, she can hang off that. and Work a little rest here. Straight arms, hips in, long legs. Another thing to notice is just how precise she's being with her feet. Little taps, not a lot of excess kicking. Just burns energy and your feet just end up bouncing off the ice. So watch her just tap, tap, perfect. Yeah, notice with how precise she's being with her feet and her tools. She's looking around. There's just not a lot of ice coming down, even though this, this pitch hasn't seen that much traffic. Um, she's just being delicate, which is really elegant and uh, fun to watch. Yeah, there, she, there's a bit of a natural hole in the ice that she's getting her tool placed in, this somewhat chandeliered. Notice she was she she didn't get good sticks there, so she kept on working until she did. You don't want to you don't want to settle for a bad placement. Uh, even when you're top roping, you want to practice good technique. If your goal here is to improve and be able to lead harder ice, you got to top rope these pitches just like you would lead them. So she didn't settle for a poor placement. It took her three or four swings, but she waited till it was good. You see. 
She needs thick weights. Like you can see from here, they're not going in like yeah. mine are. No, she needs to wait on her. Yeah. I do think Lindsay has to work a little harder for her placements with not having the pick weights on. And that's all personal preference, you know. What makes the tool feel good to you? You play around and see what works. Yeah, it's definitely a trade-off. If you have lighter tools, they're easier to hold overhead and it's easier for your shoulder and to stabilize it up high. But you have to swing harder to get the same inertia and same speed into the ice. So it's definitely worth playing around with different weighted tools. And like Pat said, it's, it comes down to personal preference. Uh, me personally, I like a little more weight up on the head of the tool so that when you do swing, it has more mass breaking through that surface of the ice and getting a stick a little earlier. Of course, having really sharp picks uh, helps having everything tuned up nicely. So we're, we can see here she's pretty varied footwork. Sometimes her feet are narrow. Sometimes she has really offset feet where one's stepping high onto a flat blob. As the ice gets more featured, we just move away from the classic triangle position. But some of the key elements still are in play. When she gets a high, good high tool, she hangs her body down off that and then you can really see where she's placing her feet and placing them well. She's on a, a really, on a pillar feature here that uh, it, it can be hard to have your feet just square to the ice, like on a planar piece of ice. And so she really has to change the angulation, the rotation of her feet to get her toes to point into the ice. Sometimes she goes a bit pigeon-toed, toes in, like here. Yeah, that's a good get, example right there. Get her points stuck into the ice. Other times she might be more duck-footed, stemming out to different blob features. But even through all that, it's still that lifting up on the toes. So she really engages the front points and the secondary points with each foot placement. You notice again how her feet are level or perpendicular to the surface, keeping her heels down. The key there is that she's able to engage the secondary points on her crampons into the ice, which is where she's getting all that stability. You notice how the feet aren't really wobbling around a lot. They're not moving. They're just super stable. And that's a well-adjusted crampon with the secondary points flush with the front of the boot. And then sharp. Her, yeah, and sharp. And her heels are low, which she's achieving by when she's tapping her feet or kicking her toe. You want to think of your toes being pulled up so you're already in that level position. It's classically been taught as kick and then lower your heels, which is actually maybe not the best way to think about it. If you want to raise the toe for the little taps and then your feet are already in the position they're supposed to be in. You might lower your heels just a little bit, but not as much as has been classically uh, taught over the years. Good solid left tool there. She's fully committed to that while she was moving her feet and she actually had a right tool out of the ice. It's when you trust those tools and have a good placement, that's okay. And now she's topping this pitch out. The angle is slacked off a bit, so she can stand. You can see there she just let go of both tools. She's standing totally on good, solid feet. Top outs are definitely can be one of the spots where the ice quality changes. So if you were leading here, one of my things I always do is even if I was pretty run out, I'd probably place a screw before the full top out because you get up onto the snow, uh, snow covered rock slabs. It just kind of always changes variables. So. A final piece of protection if you were leading when you top out climbs is a great idea.